<laughs> that's why I won't let you. But um, we're anyway. going live. All right, awesome. <clears throat> Thank you so much, everybody, for attending and any virtual attendees. Um, I'd like to call this meeting to order on November 3rd at 6.43 p.m. Uh, any declarations of pecuniary interest? So given. Um, let's look to move to amendments and approval of agenda. Um, is are there anything that we want to discuss from the agenda, or are do we have a motion? Um, I'll Oh, they are in the new agenda package, but perhaps yeah. not. But they they weren't, weren't yeah, they were attached on the website, but not printed. So we'll have to do it at our January meeting. Okay. Um. So do I have an, an, a motion to approve the agenda? I can make that motion. Thanks, Barb. Seconded by Rob. All in favor? So carry. Um. <coughs> consent agenda. Any. Any discussions uh, about the consent agenda, or do I have uh, any motions to approve it? Wow. Motion then to approve the consent agenda. Motion to approve the consent agenda. I'll make that motion. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All a second. Thank you, Joyce. All in favor? No carry. Okay. Uh, new business PCI and budget. So attached in your budget package uh, was a document that is an Excel spreadsheet, and it was a walkthrough of, it was all the budget spelled out, and then there is a re was a report sent just explaining uh, what is here versus uh, the 2022 budget. So for the first and last time ever, uh, the budget perhaps will be a bit lower because there were some services that PCIN had invested in that they are pulling out of mainly a piece of software that we had purchased to try and use to get to know our collection better. Um, there's been a couple of stumbles with that software. First of all, through COVID, uh, there was really poor support from the company and it wasn't really performing the way we were wanting it to perform. And we couldn't get enough training from them to kind of make it worthwhile and Stratford probably felt the most benefit from the software we top of statistics that really what she can generate is enough and in fact all of the smaller libraries agreed that it wasn't really benefiting them so we've ended our contract and it means that this year we are pretty much paid up <coughs> so the uh, budget uh, down for us by a little bit. So there isn't a huge increase this year for PCIN uh, for St. Mary's through the PCIN agreement. So uh, we are still required to, I'll just talk through a couple lines here. We are still required to put uh, money in a reserve account for a contribution in the future for our a new ILS, which is a lending system. We put about $1,466 aside for that. We put money aside for a new van. We put, that's $1,200. And then we um, contribute to a download library collection, which is our consortium. So that's the larger group that includes Cambridge, Waterloo, and Kitchener. As well as uh, this year, we are purchasing newspapers, a collection of newspapers that is available through download library now and we contribute $578. So the download library and the RV Digital, they come out of our electronic, pardon me, our magazine and newspaper line and the download library comes out of our collections budget. Um, and that's a, just a small change from 2022. So there really isn't um, much excitement around the PCIM budget this year. I will share with you at this point, though, that the uh, CEO of the Stratford Library has resigned uh, and effective December 31st. She has accepted a position in on the East Coast, uh, running a regional library there. Uh, so we are expecting, of course, a change in the CEO. And um, we look to the CEO in Stratford for a lot of historical information because she's been there the longest of all the CEOs. And she helped establish PCIN, so she will be a great loss for us. Um, but 
we wish her well and hope that she finds what she's after on the East Coast. So um, she generates this budget on our behalf and presents to the PCIN board, which she did at our last PCIN board meeting, and the budget was approved by the board. So now it comes back to us to for information purposes really only and, and for integration into our budget draft. And that has happened. So that's uh, that's before you at a later topic on the agenda. Any questions on that? <clears throat> Jim here. So if we have a, a high level overview of the PCIM budget, it was a whatever it did say in there it was fourteen percent or something decrease or something like that. Uh, so what was the cost in twenty twenty one and what's our total cost in twenty twenty two? I think this was just twenty twenty one. Yeah, twenty twenty one. But if I go to the budget I sent you, <clears throat> In 2021, uh, we paid PCIN $29,553. This budget is proposing um, with the reserve money which normally wouldn't be included, 30312. Without the reserve money, it's 27646. But approximately $2,000 from 2022 to 2023. And the, and the PCIM board did discuss whether there was value in putting that money in reserve. But at this point, they were concerned that other, not necessarily St. Mary's, but some of our partners they need that little bit of a cushion for their budgets. So we they decided not to um, put that in reserve for each library just to stick with our original resource. Okay. Any any questions, other additional questions or comments? There's a recommended motion then um, in the agenda if anyone is interested in making it. Thank you. No. Do we have a second? Just a second. Okay. All in favor? So carried. That was an easy vote. <laughs> Reduce budget. Um, <laughs> all right. So now we're going to talk about the section five point two, the the library budget. So um, I apologize. This does not print nicely. So I, I apologize. It's a little tricky to navigate if you've got a print copy because it likes to just put some sections of the document, but uh, the overview here is that uh, we anticipate still getting our, our Ontario uh, operating grant, our money, we hope again from Canada grants for summer students, we hope to still get our revenue from first step, uh, there is a small increase um, in our ask to first South if our first South numbers are in agreement of 3%. Uh, that is, I take my lead from what our other partner libraries are putting forward, that it being Stratford and Toronto County, they are putting forward a 3% request. Uh, so at the moment, I'm recommending we do that as well. Um, our biggest costs, as always, are wages and benefits. There are very small increases in the other lines from uh, 5100 on. So those are things like the library supplies and equipment, um, our meeting expenses, advertising, training. And this year, uh, finance sent us the document with the adult learning budget directly after the library budget. So just if, in case you're wondering where that is. Um, there are no real increases in the adult learning budget. Our hope is to maintain the existing money we received from 
uh, the province to run the program to still get our Stratford donation at, and that's at a 3% increase. I hope not to use any money from reserve uh, unless it's related to the move and at which time I will come to you with a request uh, for approval on that. And then salary and wages, of course, have gone up. Um, our part-time person, um, there is a new piece of legislation out that all non-full-time staff need to be offered OMERS and all uh, public service employers are facing this. So Stephanie currently does not have OMERS, so she will be offered it, um, which is great. Um, other things that are here, I don't know whether she will accept, it's her choice. So that may be a small, they've already factored that in. Um, other than that, I don't have any real increases here, except as you are already aware, our red line uh, for the new property at 47 Water Street, which we've discussed. Any questions? Questions or comments? Um, I have a comment question. This isn't really a, um, our budget item. But in terms of um, the town, ownership of our building that they're in, are there any um, plans there? Or are, there are there any asks that we should be making? And one thing that's been on my agenda for the last 12 years is the guy basement. And I really would like to see some asks that are beyond the budget saying we think uh, some of these uh, things at, at this facility need to be addressed. And the basement is one uh, of better access to the second place. Both are substantial. Uh, so. And that might be at this point, I can I can again speak to the director of facilities and share that, but that came up again tonight. But it might also be something that we share with our representatives on the downtown revitalization project as they are analyzing all of the properties downtown. And um, it actually already came up when the architect visited two weeks ago and he came upstairs and couldn't take the elevator up or down like a lift. And that apparently is not, doesn't meet the legislation that's gonna be in place that all public buildings have an elevator by 2025. That's all he shared with me. Um, but the fact that that basement is not usable um, when he comes for his meeting with me in the next two weeks, I will share that with him and mention the people that are sharing that. So. I wonder if there's some way of, of, as, as a board to make the town aware that these are issues that, have been, that are important. I mean, I mean, I understand the current project. But my, my concern is always that this, this project um, can be nothing other than delay in solving these problems that five years from now, the person sitting in my chair is still looking for this, asking for those issues to be addressed. One of the recommendations that I have made to Sarah, depending on who is on the library board mm -hmm. next, is that the New council get an opportunity and the library we're going to come up to you to do a full facility tour mm -hmm. and, and and to see you know I we didn't do that with this board and we certainly didn't do that with this council and I know the council is the new council will be taking a tour of all of the facilities but if we're not on that agenda to create a separate event for that to happen see the basement see some of the issues that we're talking about and have that for and I think that. And that's part of the orientation discussion, but sort of advancing things. But um, it's easy to talk about, but it's when you see it, it's a different story. And uh, you know, and I think that we could have maybe even get some people from our from um, like get someone from this town to come and explain some of the issues too at the same time. Maybe make it a an event that way. Yeah. Okay. If I'm on board, I'm on the board, I will be attending. If I am not appointed, I will you know, not be. But it's that, that sort of was my thought as a, as a good continuance. That's great. And as far as our discussion on Tuesday about the tour day, where um, all the new council is going to, and all the council, just new members, 
are going on a bus tour around town to see all the different facilities and to kind of get an introduction to wastewater and the library and all sorts of, we are on the tour briefly oh, okay. we have 10 minutes, which is great. Um, so at least people will come into the space and get a feel for it. And then I think if we do an open house um, in the new year and invite council members again, that would be a good thing to <laughs> Thank you for that feedback. The only thing I wonder, and I mean, the basement space is, is there <clears throat> usable, but if we make it like usable, does that then probably also put it in that elevator component of accessibility, like as opposed to, I don't know where it lies now, maybe it already does get encapsulated in that, but we might want to keep that in mind. What the rules are on the logistics. We need this three level lift and elevator instead of two. Like, that's like, I mean, I'm happy with the budget we presented. We've done a really good job of managing that and going forward with it being temporarily in place here, right? in spite of the cleaning things we've done. Right? So, this other one is just, it's just an aside. I mean, those are things that are, are not under our control, unfortunately. We were just living in a certain structure that might work as best we can. <clears throat> Well, we can talk a little bit more about this in the next uh, on the next uh, topic, next agenda item. I'm losing words tonight. I got everybody. I told you. Um, but uh, is there are there any comments? Who wants comments specifically about the library budget? So the 2023 library budget going through. What's the total ask there? What's that percentage above what it was last year, approximately? That is a very good question, Jim. Mm -hmm. I don't know that this document that she sent totaled it. No, I couldn't figure I can't it. So, no. yeah. so I do not think I can answer that. However, I am happy to uh, here it is. Um it's if you printed it and it went wonky like mine, it's on the fourth page. Fourth page. Oops. I don't know that it does do Is it different than the three percent? But <clears throat> well, somebody can somebody run it against uh, last year's and this year's percentage difference? Three mm percent? -hmm. Like, or well, just about any, anyone? Who's... I don't know that. Do you have a comment? I don't know that. I thought I would. I'd like to start with that. And um, I am. Hmm. Do you have the access there, Jim? Yeah, I, I just couldn't find it. I looked at last year's budget and I think it was projected to be 543. Okay. So I think yeah, that's weird. I think it's it I'm sorry about that. I guess I didn't do it. So, the annual budget asked for last year. I would be but into this general ledger is Okay. So, I'm hoping someone's doing that. There's sort of a big piece of pen or What was it? Right up. Five. And then what is it this year? That's what we do now. We'd, we'd have to run a total of this page and this page. And you're welcome. No, no, we don't. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. Well, really nice That's weird. So I can send that out to you tomorrow morning with a, the line to do the totals, but that delays you approving it. Did finance finance drew this up, correct? Mm -hmm. So this finance had a what was from the town folks? What was the <clears throat> we had was a three percent increase? Was the 
we were asked to stay within and or under a three percent. Okay. I think that's my question. Are we within that or not? I think we so what's the three percent on the five forty four number now? Mm -hmm. What are the well what are the wages? We just well, I think it'll be higher. So what is over three? Like, I got think, and that's a big yeah, part. Of it. So I did some rough math because I, I get the time. So and, and it's over three, but not less. Yeah, yeah, it's in the ballpark. Okay. It's because of wages, excuse me. That's just the rough math I did at home tonight correctly. So okay. Yeah, there's no big. I don't see anything between flashing red lights on anything other than the wage factors. I think excuse me, big part of the budget. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, is the board then comfortable passing the budget without knowing the exact percentage? You can Absolutely, as long as it's close to this. Yeah, okay. And I'll send it to you first thing in the morning. Okay. I'm going to total one. Yeah. And maybe they, can, maybe they can provide feedback to finance that this document is a bit of a challenge for our us. And uh, yes. as volunteers, we'd like to keep it easy to read. We have, and us doing tallies is not ideal. <laughs> Very much yeah. not my idea. <laughs> and we appreciate them getting it together, but that we'd love that little bit of that additional component. Um, okay, so then there's a there's a recommended motion. Um, does anyone want to make that motion? Oh, okay. thank you so much, Barb. <laughs> Second. Okay, all in favor? So Terry. Marvelous. Um, okay, adult learning budget. Do we want to discuss that as well, or because we had a small discussion? We discussed it a bit, but we can't. If there's any other discussion about the adult learning budget, we still don't have any indication from the province where the program is going. We have not been instructed that anything is changing. Uh, I have a call with the ministry next week. Uh, just to check in, we're going to go check in to see where things are at and whether we're meeting our milestones. And she gave no indication there's a change. I notified them that we were indeed proceeding with that sign the lease and we're moving forward. She didn't say stop everything, pull back. So uh, we're assuming we're good to go. Uh, that's the second time we discussed it. So she now knows and they have to go through an approval process, but and they can't do that till we approved it. So she gave no indication there were any concerns. Be speaking with her next week. Okay. Um, then, any other questions about adult learning? Now? I think it's just important to remember that the adult learning is really a revenue, basically a revenue control program, money coming in and money growing. As long as it's managed that way, then there is no issues. Yeah. Uh, we did. Um, as my monthly report noted, we did say goodbye to the temporary full-time person who was covering off our, our staff person on maternity leave. So uh, we are waiting to see whether that uh, individual who will return a little bit early. Uh, if not, it's really challenging to fill a position right now that's less than six months. So I was talking to our new HR director today and we were trying to be creative. And in fact, I think what we're going to try and do is use library casuals uh, to staff the space in an information seeking role and a reading role, um, which I'm sure they will be grateful for the hours. So um, just as a stopgap for a few months to get us back to the return. So, can they do a bit of an end too? Do you think that's possible? Well, yeah, and they can help with social media because that's what they do with the library too. Okay. So yeah, it will be very helpful for Nicole. Um, yeah. How much is left of her leave? Well, that's what's up in the air. Um, uh, absolute stop date, I believe, is March 2nd. Um, but it's, it's possible she could return early. So we're HR has chatted with her and she said no, but now it's possible. So we'll see. Who's our new HR? Her name is Jennifer Nectel, and she came to the town with um, over 20 years experience in a variety of roles, quite a diverse background. Her latest position was with the University of Water, uh, pardon me, the University of Laurier, uh, overseeing uh, sort, of, sort of a Brent equivalent of the library system. Yeah, 
So she is in love with libraries. We've seen her quite a bit since she started, and she's quite very nice to work with. So. Let's have another library lover. Yeah. Not that everybody is in the library lover. They're not. <laughs> They're not. I know. I don't want to paint everybody in this version like that, but we need I, to work on that. Yeah. Um. Well, then, is is there are there any other any other discussions about the adult learning budget? Not particularly adult learning, but I'm just looking at we're talking about how it's hard to read these spreadsheets. But I mean, it's great to have historical information. But 2019 is getting a little stagnant now. So if they took 19 and even 20 out, mm -hmm. then it would all fit. I think it's pre COVID. That's why it's there. Yeah, yeah. maybe. Right. Right. That's a very I know another committee to, that's been the, the presentation. Point. Shrink yeah. those itself. Yeah. Put in the package even. Yeah. Shrink those at a table to 100%. Yeah. yeah. Shrink to nine. And I thought I'd have dare go smaller than that. Just make me. Sure. But it's still. Right. Sometimes I think that comes budgets are. Specifically designed to be unreadable. So we all just nod and say, yeah, that looks good. Paper that have a look at I think when it comes to the board, we should be looking at the same eight and a half by 11 page that we would see as a council of budget meetings, where it's oh. all there, just the main items. Yeah, that looks a lot easier to Yes, <laughs> and that's how I work. I look at the total at the bottom and work backwards. Yes. Yeah. You know, the labor, the owners. And then there's a bunch of stuff lumped in together, you know, the at the bottom. It's yeah, so easy. Yeah, much. I found this very cumbersome. Oh yes. Yeah. Once that um, document is ready in the binder, I can also provide you with a copy of that. I have not seen the binder yet. So, um, but that is the one that budget lines are mixed in together, and that I know we have had feedback from you that you wanted it line by line. So, maybe both. But I can send you both. Maybe both. But that will be a Again, yeah. and we'll be with new board. Well, they say we would like the entire day or whatever they want. Um, okay, then, um, any, any other comments or, or there's a motion recommended in the agenda? Yeah, approve the adult budget. Thank you, Ron. Thank you, Brett. John, in favor? Okay, uh, orientation for board members. So this is just a quick uh, read of discussion. We've already had this when we did our legacy survey and when you provided feedback uh, through the development of our strategic plan. But I just wanted to go over that when the new board does start, uh, we will review those two documents as well as work our way through that four-year plan that the Ontario Library Service lays out and I hope to do 15 to 20 minutes of orientation at the beginning of each library board meeting uh, for at least the first year. And I'd love to do it for full four, but we'll see if they tolerate that. Um, because I think it's a good, a good way to incorporate, and there might be some reading attached to the agenda um, for them ahead of time so that the, it's an effective 20 minutes or so. So I just brought that forward. One last kick at the can in case you felt that something else that you would have thought was helpful that we didn't do. Um, we will again work through all of the policies within their four-year cycle, but perhaps there was one you thought we should touch faster than just in the in the original schedule, but I just put it on the table if you just want to give the last bit of feedback on orientation before we start orienting because it's in January we'll be here before we know. Has there been much interest or I can't answer that question. That's all done by the clerk. So <clears throat> I hope so. There's not people who like me every day. Yeah, good. And would we know already if North South applicants? Yeah, yeah they keep they take. I would think within the next three weeks, most councils will be making their themselves will meet and make that decision. So we're working on that. But you're requesting again to go over and advocate for the order. Yes, um, I have put that forward for the fall, and I was deferred until which, the new year. To, which I was kind of asked about that, but I think that makes sense because right. you didn't need to sell to me per se. You need to sure. 
just yet inform the new people. Yeah, we will be at the January 7th budget meeting for PERSA. We went, we go every year and make a presentation to three libraries and we put forward our request for funding and then we wait and hear. But we will be there. So will there be a, a board meeting before the HM? The HM yes. is in late January. Yes, hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully we'll be close to our normal schedule of the first week yeah. of uh, January. Um, I'll put it out to the board members maybe with the, that first week date and the second week date and see what responses are like. Well, if there are no additional comments at this stage on this, I think it's a good time for me to thank all of you for your service to our community and our library because it is a big, exhausting volunteer job that takes a lot of hours and a lot of time and a lot of attention. And it's it's a, a something that you're doing for your community that is kind of behind the scenes. So I'd like to thank all of you for your service for the last four years, because really, I think we've actually accomplished quite a bit and we've kept everything trucking in a really difficult time. And that's mainly to do with our incredible staff, our incredible CEO, but also a lot to do with everyone here. So thank you so much for your dedication and your service. I don't think I say that enough to all of you, but I really do appreciate it. And um, I know that we don't know who's coming back, but for those of you who aren't definitely coming back, know that everything that you've done has been extremely appreciated by me and I think everybody else. So thank you. And thank you Cole, for your leadership and keeping us all. I'm just very say when you look at all the town fairs and so forth, I think the library really took on the well during a difficult time. And so I think there's a lot of people that look to the library for support continue to so with the program and so forth. So I think it's really proud of so many initiatives that going on with the library really has started to take more now in the social role. There's some wonderful volunteers and friends of the library doing different things to promote the library and make it an important part of the community. So I, I think it's been a really <clears throat> two years of difficult time for the library performed exceptionally well in a tight budget and difficult circumstances. Yeah. I sent an email to Bill today. We received a lovely bit of feedback from a community member uh, this week about how the role of the library seems to be changing and how the need we're meeting in the community. And I responded to say thank you, but it's not just me. It's having a board that every time I've come to you about these crazy ideas, you've been all very supportive. And um, and then we've had staff that jump right on it and pick it up for some, even a second discussion and they're on board. And then we have friends of the library that uh, said to my idea about the food pantry, absolutely we're in and we'll pay for the fridge. And thank you for that because it all contributed to a super smooth move into this. And I tell you, it's used daily. And, uh, and, it just, and then while they're in the library, we satisfy other information needs um, while we're there. So it's great. It's a great connection. And uh, it's a place for our community connector to come in and meet people in a nice neutral place. And that's going well since she started. And yeah, it's um, in a good place. Just a little tight for space. We're <laughs> <laughs> chafing us a bit. That's yeah. next. Yeah. No. Yeah. Um, I also think I should take a moment. Also, uh, Eileen Mountain has recently passed away, and she was a chairperson and a very active volunteer. So, this is a moment to um, thank Eileen for her service to the library board over the years and at her active dedication to volunteer. She will be missed. She was a lovely person. So, um, so. Uh, any additional business? Sure, yes. Let's do it. Uh, well, I mean, um, first thing is uh, myself and uh, Joyce, I gather, are not going to be on the board next year. Part of the Friends of Library Constitution does have the, the board, uh, we do have a board member. Come and join us on the FOL. And um, as the elected chair of the FOL, I'm always, <laughs> I'm always able to uh, come in public meetings like this one, should I be 
what we do as a non pesticide participant on the side. For events that are coming up, uh, we have a uh, book sale coming up. Can we can we struggle with uh, renovations at the uh, town hall and the play and stuff to get things going? We're having our book sale in the first week of December. It's from November 30th through to December 3rd. If you have books and stuff that you want to donate to the sale, you can have at the library or call our volunteers who can fill up and we'll gladly come and pick them up for you. And we're also having a, a dinner theater with the uh, community players. That's on November the 26th. And the Westover Inn has kindly <laughs> opened their dining room for us to have a, a dinner with them. They are, in fact, on my eighties right now, off of Hawaii or something like that. So I would encourage you um, to come up to the play and enjoy some social time with friends of the library, have dinner at the rest of the room. And um, there's a small donation of like 10 bucks that comes into the, uh, the coffers. Uh, we are always looking for more volunteers. We're especially looking for volunteers, people who would like to work on our management committee. Our management committee is a working management committee, unlike a board here. A board is more about governance. We're about getting our hands dirty and we probably going to spend a lot of time organizing book sales, which is one reason why I cannot do one Do you have any other thoughts you want to add to choice? So that's that's where we are. Okay. So thanks again to the FOL for everything, everything you do. We try our best. It's better than my, almost anyone's best. So uh, thank you. Um, okay, with that, unless there's any additional comments, do I have a motion for adjournment? I can make that motion. Sure. Thank you. Second. Joyce. <laughs> yeah, Joyce, you can make that. All in favor?